everybody, it's Beth here from Artbase and today I'm going to show you how to paint this very cute little Halloween owl. So um, it's quite a simple palette. All you will need in terms of colours for your painting is um, a blue and a black. If you have a purple, that's great, but don't worry if you don't, you don't need it. Um, we'll need some white for our moon and our owl. And then um, a little bit of yellow for his eyes and some brown for the tree and for the feathers on our owl. Um, we'll also need, if you've got a little sponge like this, so this is, this is a well-used one, it's just an old washing up sponge um, cut up into quarters. So if you've got one of those, brilliant, because we will use the sponge to create our sky. Um, and the only other thing possibly is if you've got a black marker pen just to finish off and help you draw out the spider web. Um, if all paint will be fine or a pencil, um, any of those would work equally as well. Okay. Um, I have also got a template. So I've sent everybody a template. If you haven't got this and you want it, uh, you can just drop me an email um, and I can email this to you. So if you've got everything ready, we'll get started. So let's just uh, move this out, out of the way. We'll put them over here for now. And I'm going to zoom you in so you can see a little bit better. Okay. So let's just move you around. So here we go. So we've got um, our paper portrait today. Um, and we'll just need, we'll just do a little bit of drawing, a bit of sketching out to start with. So you've got your owl templates. What I'd like you to do is place them in the middle and then we're just gonna move them over just a little bit to the left. Okay, so we've got him sitting on our tree. So let's just place him there and I want you to hold him really still and we'll just draw around him just to get the size just right. Templates, you don't have to use a template but sometimes it's quite nice just to get you started on your drawing, just get the outline done like that. So you've got your basic outline of your owl. We still need to draw in some of our features, don't we? So we'll start off by, can you see where your line comes in at the sides? It sort of comes in and then out again. So you've got a little sort of dent there. Okay. Well, what I'd like you to do is I want you to just continue this curve and always press nice and lightly when we're sketching, guys, just in case you want to change it at any point. So we're going to continue this line in and we're going to bring it in, keep going, keep going, each side, just bring it in. And then as we get towards the middle, we've got a little gap. So at this point, we're going to just take it up just a little bit like that. Okay, we're going to draw our beak over the top of that. So don't worry about pressing too hard because we'll probably rub a little bit of that out. So once we've done that, we can put our beak in now. So we're going to just come up a little bit and we're going to do a little line across and then two little lines coming down into a triangle. So we've got our beak there. If you wanted to rub out these little lines, you can do or we can just paint over them. Okay, so once you've done that, we are now going to do an, um, this little line inside his face. So we're going to come down from the top of our head, probably a couple of centimetres, and I want to just draw a little line that goes up and over, and then it's going to follow the curve at the edge of the face and we're going to come all the way round and then join up with the beak like that. Okay, and we'll do the same on the other side. So now we're going to go up. So we've got this little peak just there and we're going to curve it round. We're, we're quite close to the edge. You can see we're quite close to the edge 
and then we're going to bring it down and then curve it up to join it with the beak on the other side. And then once you've done that, we can do his big eyes. So we're going to give our owl quite big eyes because that's what makes him look cute, is these nice big round eyes. So I'm just drawing two circles inside about the size of a chocolate button. Okay, so just little lines, just so you get your circles. Okay, so now we've got our owl's face drawn. The only other little line on our owl that we'll do is his wing. So we're just going to come in from the edge of our owl, just a little bit. Again, a couple of centimeters will be fine. And then we want to do a curve. So we're going to bring this line down and then start curving it round to join up with the bottom of our owl. And we're taking it just about a centimeter or two, just away from this point here, can you see? And then we can just bring it round, join it up. And then we just underneath that, want to do another little line that comes down, curves up to join up with that point as well. So we've got his little tail in. Okay, and that's all the drawing we need to do for our owl. So after that, we'll put our tree in. So he's sitting on a branch, isn't he? So what we'll do, we'll just come over to this side of the owl and I want to do a branch that comes across the page and it's going to just curve up just slightly. And we're going to take it off the edge of the page. So doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same as mine, just roughly like that. So we're just curving up just a little bit. And then we'll leave the gap under the owl. So I estimate probably about three or four centimeters under the owl and we're going to draw the bottom of the branch. So it's going to follow the curve of your top line, but it's going to just get a little bit closer so it gets narrower as we go up. Okay, so we can see that it's really thick down there, but as we go up, it gets closer to the branch and, it, and that thickness gets um, a little bit narrower. And then we want a little branch coming off, so we'll come back down and then we'll just do another little line coming off the page and another one there. So we've got a little branch, little offshoot from there. If you wanted to rub that out, you could, but it's not essential because we will just paint over it. Okay. So we've got that branch. We just need to draw the tree trunk in now. So we'll just come to the edge here, curve it round and take it all the way down off the edge of the page. And then we'll come up and we'll just the rest of the tree trunk and it's just a little line that goes all the way up to the top of the page and you can just curve it around just slightly and goes off the edge of the page I'm just going to show you the edge there so it just curves up like that just off the top of the page so he's now sat on our um, lovely branch um, and then the only other little bit of drawing before we start painting is we want to do our lovely full moon. So we're going to go up to this corner here and we're just going to draw our moon. So I'm making it nice and big, about the size of an apple, I would say. So always circles can be quite tricky to draw. So I always just do little lines just to get my basic circle shape. And don't worry if it's not a perfect circle, it doesn't matter. Just ha have a little go, okay. So once we've um, done that, that's all the drawing we need to do at the moment. We'll come back and we'll draw our bat in at the end, but I think we'll get painting now. So to start with, we will get our sky painted in. So it's a night sky, so we want to make it nice and dark. And we're going to start off, we're going to use our sponge. So if you've got a washing up sponge like mine, you've got your, your sort of hard edge and you've got your soft side. So what we want to do is we hold the hard edge and we use the soft sides. 
and we're going to just squirt out a little bit of blue and black paint. I just use a little bit of cardboard, it saves me washing up at the end. I'm going to just dab my sponge into the paint. So I've got a little bit of paint on my sponge and then what we're going to do is we're going to dab. That's really important that we just dab and not wipe because it's a completely different effect and we want the effects of dabbing. So we're building up our colours. So take a little bit of time and just keep dabbing your sponge into your paint and just lightly, you don't have to press hard with your sponge, just a little bit careful around your owl, but don't worry if you go into him a little bit. And then we're just going to dab, dab, dab round your moon and don't worry again if you go into your moon a little bit it doesn't matter it's just do your best and then we'll go right to the edge of the paper here my sponge dabbing away don't forget to do under your branch as well so all the way down to the bottom of the page and you can see i haven't completely covered my background you can still see a little bit of white showing can't you and that's fine because we're going to build up our colors so if you have got a purple at this point you could get a little bit of purple and we can layer it over the top um, and if you haven't got a purple don't worry you don't need it um, so you can just keep going with your blue okay and we'll just another little layer over the top you hear my easel squeaking away with all my dabbing and then all the way to the edge and you can see that you get this lovely effect by just dabbing rather than painting okay so once you've added that second layer what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our black I'm going to pop a little bit of black on my sponge and we're going to just now very lightly you don't need to press hard with your sponge because it's quite nice to see a little bit of that texture of the sponge coming through on your painting so I'm just going to work around just little bits on your sponge at a time just pressing nice and lightly just dabbing away we're just going to add that little bit of black now and try and go right up to your owl if you can. So, and round your branch, it might be a little bit tricky, but just, just do your best. Okay, and we'll just go right to the edge and nearly there. Just keep going and just keep dabbing nice and gently and we'll just don't forget about under the branch as well just get that sky all nicely painted okay so hopefully what you'll see is through that black you will see some lovely shades of blue and if you've used a little bit of purple some shades of purple as well Okay, so it's not just a boring black sky, we've got some nice um, tones and shades in that sky just to make it look a bit more interesting. Okay, so now you've got your sky done, we've pretty much finished with our sponge, you can just put that to one side and then we're just going to get our moon painted next. So we're going to need a little bit of white paint. So I'm using quite a big brush because it's quite a big area and I'm just going to paint my moon white to start with and you can see I've, I'm sort of painting round and round with my brush to try and follow the shape of my moon and then I'm going to what I'm going to do I'm going to do a little line that goes around the edge of my moon like this so circle around the moon and this is the light coming out of the moon so like a little light bit 
And what might happen is that you might pick up a little bit of paint on your brush. So it might end up being a little bit more of a light blue or a bluey grey colour and that's fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of that that I've picked up on my brush, a bit of that colour and I'm just going to go back in, into the moon and we're just going to go round and round, round and round all the way to the middle and it just gives a nice little bit of shading, a little tiny little bit of colour and a bit of a bit more shape to our moon than just flat whites. Okay, but you've got this lovely strip of light around the moon coming out from the moon. So we'll let that dry once we've done that. And I'm going to now um, get the tree painted before we come to our owl. So for the tree, what we'll do, you just need a little bit of brown. So I've just got, I've, my brown is called a burnt sienna. It's like a ready brown, but it really doesn't matter. You can choose any brown that you have. And again, I'm, I'm staying with my bigger brush just because we've got quite a lot of, of space to paint at the moment. So I'm just going to paint it all brown to start with. So we've got a base of brown. So when I'm painting, I'm just using quite small amounts of paint on my brush. I'm painting my tree by following the line, my pencil line. So I'm not going across, I'm going up and down, very gently with my brush, not pressing hard on my bristles or spraying them out, just nice and gently. And we're just gonna go up and down and get that tree painted. So a little bit careful around my owl. We'll get a nice base of brown onto our tree. Now we're not going to leave it just brown. We're going to add a little bit of tone. So a little bit of dark and light. But let's just get the, the base colour on first. So just keep dipping your brush. Slow around the edge so that you're following the shape of that branch and not going out of the lines if you can help it. Just nice and careful all the way to the edge of the page. So just this last little bit. I like that. Okay, so once you've done that, just go right into the sky. There we go. So once you've done that, we need to add a little bit of tone into our tree. It looks a little bit flat, doesn't it? We want to make it look a bit more 3D, a bit more um, curved. So we're going to dip into our black, just a little bit of black on the tip of your brush. And we're just going to work a little bit of black along the edge of our tree. And if your brown is still a little bit wet, it should just blend in nicely. If your brown has started to dry, like mine has, then what you can do, so you paint a little bit of black right along the edge, what you can do is you can just gently wipe any black paint off your brush, go dip back into your brown, and then use a little bit of brown just to blend in that black and the brown together. So where that black is, you can work your brown just a little bit over the top, back into the black a little bit, and then just blend it in. And what you hopefully will end up with is a nice sort of darker edge. So it would go a bit more dark brown rather than a black. So just using your brown just to help blend that in so we've got that darker edge and you can see already it gives it some some shape so the next little bit we'll do the same on this branch here so just along the edge just a little bit of black just along the edge and you might want to swap to a slightly smaller brush if you're using a, a quite a big brush it's up to you but just along the bottom edge of that branch 
curve it round, join it up with the trunk a little bit, like there. And then dip into your brown, and then use your brown just to paint over the top and just to help blend it in to the rest of the branch. Okay, so now you should hopefully have a darker edge to this branch as well. So we've got a darker edge to our trunk and a darker edge to our branch. And that's because the light from the moon is reflecting down. So the top of the branch will be lighter and the underneath the bottom bit will be darker. And what we'll also do is just at the bottom of our trunk, I'm just gonna add a little bit more black just to help make that the bottom bit just a little bit darker okay so just a little blend a little bit more black in now once you've done that we can also just um, give your brush a little wash wash off the black from your brush and then I always like to just dry off any drips so my brush isn't really drippy so you can just wipe it on your palette or a little bit of kitchen roll or whatever you have. And then I'm just going to get a little bit of white on my brush. And we're just going to brush a little bit of white down the front of that tree. Okay, so just adding a little bit of light from the moon down the front of the tree. Just little bits, tiny little bits on your brush and just sort of blend it in a little bit. And again on the branch, just a little bit, just along the top of the tree and then just sort of working it into the paint a bit so we've got just a lighter top section okay and do it along the top of that lower branch as well so just a little bit and if you're working it in it will end up probably being a more of a lighter brown but that's fine so we'll just leave that now to dry and we will move on to our owl. But you can see how that branch looks nice, a bit more realistic now, doesn't it? Um, we might add a little bit more on at the end once it's dry, but we'll see how we go. Okay, so let's paint our lovely owl now. So this is where you might want to swap to a slightly smaller brush, depending on, on what size brush you've been using. And we need our white paint now. So I've got a, quite a big scoop of white paint and we're going to paint his tummy white. So if you have been using white ready mix paint like me, um, sometimes it's, it's quite thin and you, if you've accidentally put a bit of sky on your owl's tummy, like me, I, which is what I've done, then you might need a couple of layers. So. What I've done is I've just done one little layer of white paint. You can probably see I've still got a little bit of sky showing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let it dry and then I'll do another layer. If you're using um, thick acrylic paint, you probably don't need to add any more. Your acrylic will probably cover that up. So see how you get on. So we'll get that first layer of white painted first of all, and then we're going to paint the head. So I'm, again, I'm going to paint around the edge first of all. And I might need to do another little layer because I did accidentally get a bit of sky on it. And then we're also going to do around the eyes in white. So around those eyes, just a little bit of white paint. And I know we're painting white paint on white paper, so it's a bit tricky to see, but we will work some other colours into it in a minute. So I've painted the whole head white. And then I'm also um, going to just pop a little bit of white just along the edge of the wing. Okay, but we don't need to paint the whole wing, just a little bit along the edge. So now I see if that's dried, I might just go back and just add a little bit more white over the top, just to try and cover up a little bit of that blue. Okay. 
So now I'm swapping to my smaller brush. So I've got a smaller brush now. Um, we're going to add some, some little feathers. So I've got a brown, first of all. So we'll go back to our brown and there's a little bit of paint on the tip of our brush. So we're not scooping up lots and lots of paint. We just want a little tiny bit on the tip of our brush. I'm going to zoom you in just a little bit to do our owl. And then I'm going to very lightly, not pressing hard, I'm going to start adding my feathers. So all I'm doing to get that nice thin line is just not pressing hard with my paintbrush. I'm just tickling the paper. So you see, I'm not pressing hard and, and doing big um, lines like that. I'm barely touching the paper and I'm just doing little lines coming down in the same direction. So these are like our little feathers and they're coming down our wing like this in this direction. So all growing, imagine the direction that the feathers grow on his wing. And we'll just do a little layer of brown feathers to start with. Now, it's entirely up to you. I'm just using one shade of brown. If you happen to have a couple of different shades of brown in your paint palette, then you can use a couple of different browns um, and do exactly the same and layer it up over the top with a, a different shade of brown. But I will leave that to you. Um, if you've just got one like me today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of black on my brush and we're going to do the same with a little bit of black. So once you've done all your browns, then you can do the same thing. So we're just going to work over the top. And I'm trying to really tickle with my brush. So I'm not pressing hard. And we're just going to do some little black feathers again, over the top of our brown ones like that. Okay. And then once we've done that, we can give our brush a little wash or a little wipe, dip into our white, and we're going to do the same thing with a white. So just little white feathers over the top. And what might happen is that it might pick up a little bit of that black paint. You might end up with a few grey feathers as well. And that's absolutely fine. That's what we're looking for. So. You will end up with some brown feathers, some black feathers, and some white feathers. Okay, so now we've got that top wing. That's pretty much done. Um, we can move on to our tummy. So for our tummy, we're keeping it very pale. I'm going to wash my brush now. So wash all that brown off my brush. And I'm going to make a grey because I want to add a little bit of shading into my tummy. So to make a grey, we're going to take a little bit of white, pop it somewhere on your palette, and then a little dip of black, and we're going to go round and round to make that grey. So I've got a nice light grey now, okay? So we do that, we don't put the black in our clean white, because that will just make all of our whites grey. We just want a little bit of grey. So I've got a little bit of grey on my brush. I'm going to just paint a little bit of grey along the edge. And it's quite a pale grey. You can see, I don't know if you can even see on the camera. So it's a very pale grey because we don't want to make our tummy too dark. And I'm painting a little strip along the edge of the wing and then a little bit of very pale grey along the bottom of his tummy like that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash that grey off my brush and just wipe off any drips so we haven't got lots of water on our brush. Just give it a gentle wipe. We're going to dip back into our white and then use our white just to blend in the grey with the white. So I'm just where that grey meets our white. I'm just using a little bit of white just to blend it in. Okay, like that. And then 
Once I've done that, we've now giving him a little bit of shape, a little bit of shadowing. We can just add a few little feathers. So I'm going to go back to my gray now, and I'm just going to, with the tip of my brush, I'm just gonna add a few little gray feathers just along the front. I'm just working down, but they're very pale, but it's just to give our tummy a little bit of a feathery sort of texture, a little a few feathers on his tummy. But we want to keep it nice and light, everybody. So not too many and make sure your grey is not too dark. Okay. And then what we can do, I'm going to just add a, one more little bit of black into my grey to make it one shade darker. So we've got a slightly darker shade of grey and then I'm just going to add a few slightly darker feathers along the bottom, just there, a couple, just along the edge, just a few and then a few. It's, it's only one shade, it's not much more, a few under his chin, okay. And we'll leave that like that for now. Um, I'm going to wash my brush. And we go to just make a darker brown. So to make a darker brown, it's very similar to how we made the grey. We take a little bit of black, a brown, and then one little bit of black into our brown, and just mix it round. Okay. I might just do a little bit more. And by adding your black gradually, it means that you can really control how dark your brown goes. So I just add a little bit more, Ooh, so you can see. So you've got a darker brown. Okay. So with your darker brown, what I want you to do is just very carefully, you're just going to paint that tail with that dark brown there. Keeping it nice and simple. So we've just got a dark brown tail. Okay. Now we're going to paint our face next. So I'm swapping my brush again to the smallest brush that I've got. Um, so the smallest brush that you've got or the pointiest brush that you've got. And we're just going to work around the top of the head and add some little feathers to the top of our head. So the direction of our feathers, again, try and imagine them growing out of the top of his head. So little bits of paint on the tip of your brush. Try not to press hard and then you can get those, those nice thin lines. And we're just having them coming out from the middle. Can you see? And then once, they're, once we've done the top, like that, with our, and I'm using my dark brown that I've made. We can use the dark brown first of all, and then we're just going to come round the edge like this, and just round, all the way around that little strip around the edge of the face, and then just some around this side, working around the face, just the dark brown, and then give your brush a little wipe, we'll go back to our original brown, the brown that we used before we added our black to it. And do the same thing. So all the way round, just another little layer of feathers around the side of his face. All the way. Just tickling with your brush, try and get those little little feathers painted. And then give your brush a little wipe. And then we can go to our grey. Well, maybe a slightly darker grey that we made. And then we can add some little grey feathers in there as well. So working, and the grey, it will all blend in. So you'll end up again with some different shades of browns and greys. And just working around the edge of our owl, like that. Now, once you've done that, we are going to go wash our brush 
and wipe off any drips. So, so just squeeze out any little drips. So you've got your brush is quite, it's still damp, but not um, no water, no drips on it. And we want the tiniest little bit of black on the tip of our brush. Now what I'm going to do, we are going to just dab. So touching just our pencil line, dab, dab, dab. So we're not painting, I'm just dabbing, just touching around, sort of following that pencil line that we did. So hopefully you can see that okay. Bring you in even closer. So just dab, dabbing, and just like almost like little dots. So just around, following that pencil line, just around the edge, like that. Just little dabs around the edge of the face, like that. And then we'll stay with our little brush and we'll paint our beak. So nice and carefully, really slowly, just follow that pencil line down. We're giving him a little black beak. Now I'm just painting the edges like that. And then the top, I'm gonna dab, so dab, dab, dab with my brush. I'm sort of curving it just slightly. So we just, by dabbing it, you just get a like slightly uneven edge. And then I'm gonna just work in, and what I'm going to try and do is leave a little white dot on my beak, which is like a little shine on the beak. Okay. Um, if you don't manage to do that, that's fine. You can just add a little bit of paint, can't you? Yeah. So that's the beak done. Now we can do our eyes. So what we'll do first of all, and maybe you want to just get your pencil, we'll just draw this to start with. Inside our eyes, we've got a little yellow strip around the edge and a big black pupil. So I'm going to put my pencil on the top and we're going to just bring that down and draw another big circle all the way inside. Now the circle touches the top and then there's a little gap around the edge. So I'm going to zoom you in just so you can see that. So I'm going to bring you really, really close so you can see this big circle. It touches the top, doesn't it? And then we've got that little strip all the way around the edge, around the sides and the bottom. So we'll do that on both eyes. So like a big circle inside and it touches the top and then we've got a little strip all the way around the sides and the bottom like that. Okay, so what we'll do, we won't use our black, I've changed my mind. So we're going to wash any black off our brush and again dry off any drips. We need a tiny little bit of yellow, so hot, just a little dab of yellow, so don't squirt lots out because you don't need a lot. Um, so I'm just popping a little bit of yellow on my palette. So I've got a little bit of yellow and we're just going to paint that little strip. Now don't worry if you go inside and in that circle there, okay? Don't worry because we'll just paint over it with black. So just a little bit, just a little bit around the edge like that. Okay, I'm going to zoom you in a little bit so we can see a bit closer. Okay. So hopefully you can see that okay. It was just that tiny, tiny edge with yellow. Now, once we've done that, that's all the yellow we need. So you can wash your brush and give it a little dry, wipe off any drips. And then we're going to go into our black. Now you might want to just leave your yellow to dry for a minute. Um, and then when it's dry, we can really carefully and really slowly just paint that big circle that we've just drawn inside our eye. And we're going to paint the whole circle black, like that. Okay, we'll do the same on the other eye. So you have to go really slowly now. Follow that pencil line with your brush 
like that. So I always do the outline first. It just helps me to stay in the lines. And then a nice big black circle in the middle. And then um, once we've done that, you can let your black dry. Give your brush a little wash. Wipe off any drips. And then with a little bit of white, you can just do two little dots in the eye and keep them roughly in the same place on each eye to give him a little shine in his eye. Okay. Now, after you've done that, I want you to, again, give your brush a little wash. And we're gonna go back to our gray that we made. It's just gonna add a little bit more detail around our eyes. So I've got a little bit of gray on my brush and I'm, again, I'm just gonna dab with the tip of my brush, we're just gonna dab a little bit of gray around the edge. So by dabbing and not doing a continuous line, we are making like a little sort of rough edge, like a little uneven edge around our owl's eyes, rather than it being a smooth line. So just really lightly, dab, 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 around that yellow, around the whole eye. Dab, 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 all the way around, like that. Okay, so we've got a little sort of gray area around his eyes. Now we're going to let all of that dry and we'll, we'll do some finishing touches with some pencil at the end. But whilst that's drying, we can put our bat in the painting and our spider. So we'll draw it out first of all, and then you can choose everybody, whether you want to paint your bat or you could just get a black felt tip and color it in. And the same with your spider, because it might be a bit tricky. So it's up to you, you can decide what works best for you. So with your bat, we'll We'll draw it out first of all. So what we need to do is we need to do, a, we're going to do it across the moon. So we've got silhouettes. So make sure you do it, leave enough space to get all your bat on. So we're going to just start maybe just a little bit over to the left of our moon. I'm going to do a curved line that comes down and then it's going to curve back up and over. So we've got this nice, shape this is the top of the wings okay and then we're going to just do some little curved lines like that and back up the other side and a little head so all we do for the head is a little like arch and then two little ears sticking up like that so I find that it's easier to do it in pencil, first of all. And then once you're happy with your drawing, and if you make a mistake, because you've done it in pencil, um, you can always rub it out. And then once you're happy, you can either colour it in, or if you've got a, a really tiny brush and it's easy for you to do, you can just paint it in. So we just paint it in nice and carefully. And if, if it's a bit tricky, you can always get a grown up just to help you do this little bit or just outline it for you to help you stay in the lines. So just nice and slowly, take your time. Again, just using little bits of paint on your brush, not big dollops, and then it's much easier for you to control and you get your that silhouette painted. There you go. So you've got your lovely bat silhouette on your moon. And for your spider, we're going to have our spider down the bottom, dangling off the branch. So the way we'll draw our spider is um, we'll do it, I think we'll do it, draw it out in pencil first, and then you can decide the best way to um, do it. I might do mine in a white oil pastel just so you can see, okay, because it might be tricky 
otherwise. So the way I do my spider web is, first of all, I'm going to do a little dot and then just there, that's the center of my spider web. And then I'm, I'm going to do this line here that comes from underneath the branch and it's gonna curve over off the page like that. Just make sure you can see properly. So that's, so once you've done that, you get the center of your, in fact, I'm moving my dot. I'm gonna make it a bit more cent, central. <laughs> so once you've got your dot, your center points, then we're going to just do some little lines that are curving. So like little curved lines curving over. And we're gonna work around that dot. So all the way off the edge of the page, we're gonna take it like that. Okay, so we've got, take that one all the way down so it joins up like that. And then once you've done that, we can put, we can connect them up with some little curved lines. So I'm curving them just slightly and we're gonna work around each section and just join them up like that. And then we'll do another little layer. We're going round like that. So do it in pencil, first of all. And if you can fit a third one in, then do that. Okay. And then, so do it in pencil, and then you can decide if you want to go over it in black pen, or a black oil pastel, or a white one, actually. I don't think it looks too bad in white. Um, or you can paint over it. So whichever you feel most comfortable with. And then for our dangly spider, we're going to just have them dangling, but bring your cobweb right over so it's attached to the branch. And then we're going to have little dangly bits. So a little bit of web dangling down. And then the spider, and again, you can draw this in pencil first of all, and just check that you're happy. So we've got a circle, little circle, and then a slightly bigger circle underneath. That's, and then the little legs, we've got eight legs, hasn't he? So we'll just do the first one. So just curving out to so one at the top, then another one coming underneath. And then next one, I'm going to curve around in the opposite direction like that. And then another one curving like that. Okay, and then you can just put these two little my antennae just on the front as well. So once you've done that, you can then get your paint or your, um, whoops, didn't need to do that. Um, get your paint or your felt tips, whichever you want, and you can carefully just paint over your pencil line and get your pencil paint, uh, your spider painted. So let's just finish him off. So little, so quite tricky with the paintbrush. So you have to go really slowly, just using the tip of your brush, not pressing hard, which is why I think sometimes it's easy to use a felt tip pen. So just like that, okay. And getting painted. Um, and then, if you painted him in black or drawn him out in black, you can just highlight it with a little bit of white paint. So just get a little bit of white paint and you can just pop a little highlight just on his body like that. And maybe just a tiny little bit along his legs. And it just helps to, him to show up a little bit as well against your dark background. Okay, and again on your spider web, you can add some little white highlights, just a little white shine, just working along your black lines. So we've pretty much finished the painting. The last little thing to do is add some stars in the sky and then we just do some finishing touches with our pencils and we are finished. So all we're going to do is just get a little bit of white paint on our brush and just Dabbing, just very gently touching the sky with our brush. And you can have some slightly bigger, 
some slightly smaller and just add some lovely little stars into your sky. Just make sure you don't forget to do a few underneath your branch as well. And then the last little bit of detail, we're just going to go back with our pencil. And I want to work around, and you can do this with, a, with either a black pen or your pencil. I just want to work around that outside edge of your eye, make it really dark, pressing hard with your pencil or a black pen just to get that outline really dark again. And then a few little lines with your pencil coming out of your eyes. So we're just gonna go working around the eye, just a few little pencil lines working around the eye, really to make those eyes a nice feature. And it just adds to the cuteness of our lovely owl. So working around with a little pencil, just radiating out like that. And you can also, with your pencil, if you wanted to, just outline your head a little bit, outline down the edge of that wing. And you can also draw in some more little feathers on his tummy. And once you have done that, you are pretty much finished. The only other thing you could do if you wanted to is an optional extra. If you've got a few oil pastels, you can work some little lines into your tree with your oil pastels, but it's not essential. It really doesn't matter. So I've got a little bit of like a brownie yellow, a yellow ochre. So I'm just a few little lines in the tree got a black, so where the black is, you can add some little wibbly lines with your black. Just into your tree, just adds a little bit more detail. So any brown, you can use even a little bit of yellow or a little bit of orange like that. And lastly, a little bit of white, just along. The edge. You could also do that white with a bit of white paint if you wanted to, just along that edge. And there you have him. So I hope you've enjoyed that, everybody. Um, and do send in any pictures that um, you've done because we would absolutely love to see them. But I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember um, to stop and start it. You've got this recording forever, so you can have another little go if you wanted to. Um, stop and start it and um, but most of all just enjoy it okay I'll hopefully see you again soon bye for now bye everybody